Okay, well I'm uh, just having a quick go at this amp again. Um, Mark has suggested popping the R16 back out, so I've just desoldered that one. And uh, I'm going to pop, that's a 3.3K as it was originally. I'm going to pop a 2.2K um, back in. Try to use as many carbon resistors as I can in here. They're a bit more expensive, but they look uh, a lot more original. Well, they're quite a lot more expensive, actually. So I'm just going to pop that one back in. Flux on it. Then uh, what I'm going to do is see if that's made any difference to the... Um, sensitivity figures in a minute but I will check it first to uh, see if it's made any difference more importantly to the um, volume control so bear with me I'll get it all set back up and we'll try again okay well I'm hooked back up again first thing I want to um, look at is the racket this thing makes um, with that signal <laughs> Certainly what Mark has said, and I'll show you in a second, is correct, so... At the moment we've got no input, I'm going to wind that up. So at 20 millivolts it's deafening, so it's not clipping then. Clipping at 23 millivolts now. Whoa, it's done my ears in. That's clipping at 23 millivolts. I just thought I'd show you actually how loud that is. I want to experience it for myself as well. So you wouldn't normally run uh, run your radio that loud, to be fair. So the clipping is definitely, as Mark says, not an issue at all. So let's connect back up to my output meter. Get rid of that bloody racket. Okay, so I'm going to get you on the um, scope, I think. It's probably best. There we are, over there. Zoom you in a bit further on that. So you can see the waveform. So, what we'll do is uh, wind it up again. Now before I had clipping um, quite low down, it's clipping at 19 millivolts before. So I think this has probably brought the amp into a bit more range. So let's uh, turn the radio back on. Let's get the voltage right, put the current up a bit. So you can see the waveform built in there, and I mean, it's just, the top of the waveforms just go in there, that, which is 23 millivolts, so increasing, well decreasing that resistor has made the amplifier slightly less sensitive, but unfortunately it's made no difference to the, um, volume control and uh, up at 1.2 watts which is there we're now at 39 millivolts so that's um, that certainly has desensitized the amp by probably nearly half because I think at 1.2 we were around 20 last time from memory, I'm not 100% sure on that, I'll have to refer back. Yeah, 40 millivolts with 7 volts across the meter. Yeah, I think 20, 20 millivolts before was um, 1.2 and it's now nearly 40. So that's still within spec, um, but as you can see, the waveform's not brilliant. 
and uh, if you have a look down at the generator there you can see 39 millivolts now and the watt meter is pretty much bang on 1.2 watts so yeah that resistor did make a difference and it did desensitize the amp okay well uh, I'm just in the process of adding a 4.7 or 4k7 resistor from the wiper which is the center uh, connection of this radio to a ground point um, let's squash it over a little bit connection of it. Let's tack that one in first. Hope you can see roughly what I'm doing here. So, get out the wiper first and then I'm going to bend the uh, get up there <clears throat> ha, it's actually taking the wiper off now isn't it? won't work without the wiper connected Use this top uh, earth here. Just want to make sure it's not going to touch anything else. Let's see if I can sort of bend it in around the back of that. Wrap it round a little bit. solder on that connection anyway. I don't think that looks out of place really. So a lot of flux on it. And then comes my box of resistors. connected yeah it's looking good let's try that okay well I'm all connected back up again I'm gonna put you on the scope um, so again everything as before I've got the output meter connected in um, 30 ohms let's, uh, let's go for it let's start ramping it up Okay, so let's go on the watt scale. Okay, so quarter to that. So we're at roughly one watt now. Okay, so one watt is 29 millivolts. You can see I've got clip in there. Clipping's now coming in at 27 millivolts. Let's wind it up, see if we can get 1.2 watts out of it. Yes, we can. 1.2 watts. It's now coming in at. 41 millivolts by the looks of it. It's a pretty shocking waveform, but then, like we say, that is mega loud if you listen to that. 
so we're actually, if this meat is anything to go by, actually, that's, um, let's just do that a little bit more accurately. Okay, 1.2 watts, 34 millivolts, look. I will double check that with the uh, dummy load as well, give me a second. Okay, well that's the waveform with the um, multimeter connected in. Um, if you can see the multimeter there, I'm at... just over 6.023 which is about as good as I'll get it and um, we're showing 30 milliwatts millivolts even on the signal generator input so that's um, that is in spec it's, it's roughly what the um, mark only did after I tapped it a few times to to uh, level out the uh, meter the needle I'm waffling now but uh, yeah there we go so let's uh, have a listen to it with some volumes, if that resistor's made any difference. Okay, let's get you on the all-important volume control. So, at the moment, we're on off. Turn it on. So it's given me... Yeah, it's not a lot of difference to be honest. Maybe a slight difference. I don't know whether increasing the um, resistor would make a difference. I'm not sure. I'm not going to mess with that though. Well, I did say as an experiment I would try a Sovereign 2 amp in, in this. Um, but bearing in mind that is um, a 15 ohm speaker. So I pinched a 15 ohm speaker there. Uh, from a Sovereign 2, Sovereign 2 amp, all connected up. Let's see what that does. Hold up, guys. Okay, so this is, this is like kind of what? Yeah. John Snow 101. Yeah, the yeah. next one is a bit, it's, it's slightly more specialist. Let's see, that works better. A little bit longer, but totally worth it. Okay, so who's asked for it? That is a more normal um, volume expectation. <laughs> Let me connect it up to the test scheme and see what that's doing. Okay, well, being it's a different app, it's got a different um, test spec on it. Um, this is a Sovereign 2 um, RP25 manual now. And amplifier sensitivity test on this um, is again 1000 hertz, 1 kilohertz. And now it says. Uh, Inject a signal sufficient enough to produce an output of 1.5 watts without serious distortion. So, um, <clears throat> let's get you on all the bits of kit. So, first of all, uh, let's see if I can get you in on that millivolt meter, milliwatt meter, even. Bear with me, I'll just mess with the camera a minute. Okay, so we got um, shaky cam back again. So I'm going to um, wind up the variable output on this. You can see I've got uh, one kilohertz, no no millivolts at the moment. Let's watch the output meter. So we're looking oh, for 1.5 on the output meter. So let's wind that up. So 1.2, 1.5 is there, and in the manual it's saying that should be per, for about 36 millivolts. So we're 27 millivolts, which is um, within spec, but uh, we got some clip in there. I mean, the clipping's coming in. Around about 21, 22 millivolts. So it's actually, it's, it's not clipping, so it's clipping About there, just starting to clip. I mean, that's 1.3 watts, so uh, it's better than the other amp, more powerful. Um, let's see what it sounds like now with that uh, amp in it. Okay, well, I think that's 
that test, well these tests are pretty conclusive now. As I say I've got the um, RP25 amp in, I've got the RP25 speaker which is 15 ohms. I see this uh, speaker and amp are geared up for 30 ohms so uh, you can't, I don't know what harm it would be by driving it into a higher impedance. It'd probably make it quieter if anything. Um, maybe uh, Mark or someone could comment on that. So if I if I left the RP25 amp in and drove the um, 30 ohm speaker rather than a 15 watt difference would that make? Would it harm the set at all? I'm not going to try it just in case the answer is yes, don't try it. <laughs> anyway, the important thing is this volume control now. Apologies for the light being in the way. It's just the angle of the camera at the moment. Um, so I'm trying to get in on the uh, volume knob. So again, exactly the same test as before with the other amp, so we'll turn it on. Nothing, I can't hear anything. So volume's coming in gradually. Just getting loud about half volume there. So that, that I would say, that is what I would call normal. So it almost certainly points to the difference in the amps and the design of the amp. Um, like Mark says, possibly modern compressed music, it doesn't like. And that's it. So I think if you really, really don't like the way that volume comes in all at once, <laughs> it might be that you get an amp out of an old um, RP25 and stick that in it. Um, as I say, you might need the speaker. I mean, it should fit. The cases are all pretty much the same size. But uh, yeah, this is a 15 ohm uh, rather than 30. So hopefully that um, helps someone else fathom out the mystery behind these radios. Um, I've learned a lot anyway, and hopefully uh, you've uh, come along for the ride and may have learned some yourself. So thanks for watching that, and um, see you again soon. Okay, well, I very quickly connected that up off camera, so apologies for that, but I wanted to verify what it would do if I connected the, um, what is pretty much a um, 15 ohm amplifier into a 30 ohm speaker, but basically what it's doing is cutting its output down. So uh, I will get that verified though, I'm sure uh, Mark or someone else will be able to say whether that's a good thing to do or not. So I just thought I'd try the radio now with um, with its original 30 ohm speaker, 15 ohm amp and see what happens. You would say, baby how's your day, but today ain't it the same, every other word is a hum, yeah okay, could it be the truth, another lady, if you took it there, it's a ball. That to me sounds fine, um, it is exactly the same, it's um, coming in. I haven't got the aerial up, that's why it's um. You know, I have still got the 4.7k, 4k7 resistor in there. I'm just going to restrict it down a little bit, but um, there's nothing noticeable about that. That sounds lovely still. So that might be a solution. Um, I will get it verified if um, Mark or someone can just say whether that's, that is a good or bad idea running a 15 ohm amp on a 30 ohm speaker. I think it's just going to reduce the output down slightly, but I mean it's, it's a huge output. You, you couldn't run that up full whack. <laughs> it just distorts too much, you know, it distorts the speaker. So that could be a solution if you want a bit more usability on your volume control then RP25 amp. Who knows? Thanks again for watching.